So my conclusion here is that the Galaxy A3 is insanely overpriced but does have one saving grace and that and the Galaxy A3 is the smallest and cheapest of Samsung's mid-range A-series of devices. In this video, let's take a close look at the A3, the good, the bad, the ugly and let's decide if this is a phone that you should consider buying. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you've forgotten, my name is Ash, this is C4E Tech and you're watching my full review of the Galaxy A3. Let's get started. Let's start with the build. Being a part of the new premium mid-range A series from Samsung, the Galaxy A3 flaunts a unibody metal construction here. This means the back cannot be removed and the battery is non-user replaceable. To the front, on top, we have the earpiece, sensors and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. Just like with the Galaxy A5, the A3 doesn't have a notification LED either. Lower below, a 4.5 inch display and at the bottom, the familiar physical home button flanked by capacitive recent apps and back keys. To the back, we have the LED flash, 8 megapixel rear camera, the speaker, Samsung branding down below and the Duo's branding at the bottom. The secondary microphone sits on top, the volume rockers to the left, primary microphone, micro USB port and the 3.5mm headphone jack at the bottom and to the right, two slots and the power button. The first slot is a nanosim card slot and the second is a hybrid slot where you could either add a micro SD card or another nanosim. The Galaxy A3 feels well built. It's just 6.9mm thick and weighs in at a mere 110 grams. Given that it sports just a 4.5 inch display, this is a device meant to be used single handed. The A3 is also powered by a 64-bit capable Snapdragon 410 chipset. That's 4 Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.2GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 306 GPU and 1GB of RAM. It's worth noting that there's also a single SIM variant with 1.5GB of RAM that also has support for LTE and NFC that this variant lacks. Anyway, as evident by the results of the synthetic benchmarks, this is a low to mid-range chip inside. Under intensive usage scenarios like gaming, it does drop a few frames at times. It can run most games though, given that it only has a display with a quarter HD resolution, but be prepared to tone down the graphical settings if needed to. The audio via the internal speaker is good, it's clear and the output levels are acceptable. Call quality and audio via the 3.5mm headphone jack is great too. Now let's talk a bit about the Gorilla Glass 4 covered Super AMOLED display. The resolution here is 960 by 540 that's spread over 4.5 inches, results in a pixel density of 245 pixels per inch. And that is just not good. But if you can look past that, the display is bright, being an AMOLED display, it has really deep blacks resulting in infinite contrast, images look vibrant, punchy, you can tone them down to more natural levels if you want to. The viewing angles are also good and, and it's very legible under direct sunlight. Though the 1900mAh battery inside is non-user replaceable, it does hold up very well. On a looping video playback test, the Galaxy A3 lasted almost 9 hours before running out of juice. In the time I spent with this phone, it lasted me through the day every day. My regular usage involves about 3-4 to four hours of calls, an hour of video, another hour of browsing, a little music over Bluetooth with Wi-Fi and 3G on all day. Most of my days with the Galaxy A3 ended with the A3 having over 30% juice left. With that being said, let's move on to the camera. The 8 megapixel rear camera is pretty good. Images shot with it retain a decent amount of detail. The color reproduction's good. Just like with the camera on the A5, there are no issues with white balance or exposure. It finds focus quick and the shutter speed's pretty fast too. This camera can also shoot 1080p video, but sadly, unlike still images, the results aren't good. Even under good lighting conditions, there's quite a bit of noise. The footage isn't smooth and is very soft. The 5 megapixel front camera though produces decent images. The camera UI here will be instantly familiar to you if you've used a Galaxy smartphone in the recent past. We have a mode key that gives you access to common shooting modes with the option of downloading more from the Samsung App Store. The settings key takes you to a list of more detailed controls. You can even pull the ones you use most often to the shortcut bar on the left. Everything's pretty straightforward and it lets you get the job done. Talking about software, the Galaxy A3 runs on Android 4.4 KitKat with Samsung's custom TouchWiz UI on top. TouchWiz on the A3 is a little different. For starters, it includes a themes option now. There are only 4 other themes available at this time though. Apart from that, there's been quite a lot of features that have been cut here. 
Flipboard Magazine, Multi-Window, the Single-Handed Mode, and even the option to expand the quick toggles on the notification bar, to name, to name a few. The A3 also skips the cut style recent apps in favor of a more stock KitKat-esque recent apps list. Additionally, there's no S-Voice and barring a few basic apps, no other Samsung apps either. All these omissions actually make this one of the lightest implementations of TouchWiz on a Galaxy smartphone, and in turn, the Galaxy A3 feels extremely responsive and fast despite the mid-range specs underneath. I don't know if the omissions here were by design or by necessity, but either way, Samsung's managed to get TouchWiz just right on the A3. Barring the very rare hiccup, this phone feels very fast and responsive, apps open up quick, and the user experience is great. Now that brings us to price and frankly I have no idea how someone decided $300 or almost 19,000 rupees was the right price for a device with a quarter HD resolution in 2015 nonetheless. I mean seriously, just look at the alternatives that you can get for this price. 16 gig variants of the Xiaomi Mi 4 and the OnePlus One for one. Uh, the Huawei Honor 6. I wasn't even a fan of the Lenovo Vibe X2 but even that will out outperform the Galaxy A3 by a lot. And if for some reason you don't want to go with Chinese brands, even Samsung has much better offerings from years past in this price range currently. The Galaxy S4 for example. Double the RAM, a full HD display, a much 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 better chip inside. I mean the Galaxy A3 in my honest opinion is priced at least $100 or 6000 rupees higher than it should be. From purely a specific specification standpoint, the Lenovo A6000 and the Redmi 2 have the exact same specs inside but are sold for just 7,000 rupees. That's about 100, 110 US dollars. But yeah, I, I do accept that these are the build, uh, the build quality of these devices don't come close to that of the A3 and these are flash sale phones and we are talking about Samsung here. So I would say something around, I, I was honestly expecting something around the 12 to 13,000 mark but 18,900? That's just insane. So my conclusion here is that the Galaxy A3 is insanely overpriced but does have one saving grace and that is the software. This is by far the best uh, best TouchWiz has ever felt and I seriously hope that it remains this light on the upcoming Galaxy A6. Well yes, I'd like for single-handed mode and multi-window to return but I'm not gonna miss the recent app slag or the Flipboard magazine or the host of Samsung apps that I never use. So anyway, this is just me. What do you guys think? Do you think the Galaxy A3 is insanely overpriced or do you think it actually warrants the price tag? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So with that, we get to the end of this review. Hope you guys liked it, hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up, share it if you can and for more videos like this, do stay subscribed. If you do have any feedback or any video requests for me, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, Twitter or Google+, the direct links to all my social networks can be found below the like button in the description. So I guess thanks a lot for watching guys, till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech, signing off. You guys have a great day, bye bye now.